Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from uh, Dominion, Old Dominion Brewing, and this is their Morning Glory Espresso Stout. Now it doesn't have the ABV listed here on the front label, and it doesn't have it on the rear of the bottle. Yeah, it does. Uh, loose lips sink ships, and... Conquettish Glory Will Never Tell, a midnight stout brewed with coffee beans. Morning Glory wakes up at 9% alcohol by volume with the aroma of espresso. And uh, to give you a little background information on these, uh, uh, MBEV has a, a hand in this brewery. Uh, they don't control what they brew or anything like that. But I do think they have a big hand in their distribution and stuff like that. So this is part of the InBev family as far as I'm concerned. So I do not support a whole lot of what they brew. Uh, I have actually poured for them at uh, some of the beer festivals. And uh, their beers are usually fairly decent. But I'm not a big fan of InBev having a hand in their operation. So uh, I don't think they do it control anything as far as the brewing process but they do have a hand in in, in their in their uh, the beer distribution stuff plus their bottles they use these twist off caps just like the uh, the big guys do you twist off the cap and throw it away and when you get done with the bottle you throw that away because it's not good for home brewing or anything like that either so let's get on with this one this one like I said is from Old Dominion Brewing they're out of Delaware now this is an American double or slash imperial stout coming in at nine percent says availability is rotating the uh, food pairings for this beer this is going to be your typical uh, typical food pairings for this style of beer the cheeses are the buttery brie gouda havarti and swiss and since it is a stout it goes well with your chocolate dishes and the meat is beef smoked meat game and grilled meat Glass first pint, Becker the Stein, the mug, the Snifter, the Side Ale, oversized wine glass. I got the double glass for this one today, guys. And it being a 9%, it says can be solid for extended periods. So, uh, I don't think there's anything else here we need to discuss. Let's see if there's a commercial description for this one. This, uh, and the commercial description is exactly what I read off the back of the bottle on this one. So... Let's get the cap off of this one. I don't know if I can twist it. I'm going to use the opener. I'm going to tear my hands up. And there goes the cap into the floor. Into the glass. It is a twisty. Let's go down the center. About as much aggressive as I could pour it there. Straight down the center. And we get us about... About a finger of head on that pour, guys. Very tight bubbles, very creamy looking head. Over to the light, there is none. It is pitch black. I don't see any tinges of red or anything around the outside of the glass. Looks very good, very typical of what a stout normally looks like in the glass. And I don't think the head's going to stick around very long. It's already down to about a half a finger already. So let's get a nose on this one. Espresso coffee, rich roasted malt, very sweet on the nose, smells very reminiscent of what a coffee stout smells like, smells very good, got a very sweet smell to it to me. 
Well, let's give it a taste. Cheers, everybody. As you can see, the head has basically dissipated. Just barely covering the top of the beer now. Very creamy, though. Nice slicing just leaving on the glass. Cheers, everybody. Tasty. Coffee. A little bit of chocolate. Bittersweet chocolate. Roasted malt. Caramel toffee. Maybe just a slight hint of tobacco in there. Very pleasing. Very nice. Nine percent, very well made beer because I'm not getting the alcohol. Well, very nice slicing is leaving on the glass. A lot of your creamier head beers will leave a nice lacing on the glass as you drink it. Very nice, very well made beer. Not getting the alcohol at 9% whatsoever. Very appealing. I actually bought a six pack of this, which is something I normally do not do, especially for these guys, but uh, I, did, I did on this one because what I heard, it was a very decent beer. Very nice, very pleasant. Right out of the fridge, 40 degrees. Uh, let's let it warm up and see how it changes by the time we get done with this one. Maybe another beer candidate for a nice uh, cigar to go with this. Yeah, very tasty. Might have to get into the humidor here and pick, get out a nice uh, stogie to go with this. So Let's let it warm up, let the other half taste it, sip on it for a little bit, and we'll come back and do the final chug and comments on this one. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Just a nice coffee stout. I'm giving a nice roasty espresso coffee taste. Rich, roasty malt, little bit of chocolate, a little bit of tobacco. Maybe just a little bit of caramel and toffee in there. Very nice. Very pleasant. Glad I bought six of these, but it's nothing outstanding. Nothing is blowing my hair back or my socks off or anything, but just a nice representation of the style. Let's do the final show. Even though it's a 9% beer, the only thing that I can really fuss about is not having a year on the on the bottle or on the label anywhere kind of want to have that and I'm really surprised with, with InBev having their hand in this it doesn't have a date on it somewhere so I think that their influence should parlay into them having some kind of dating uh, especially with, with 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 the money that they have they could very easily have a dating machine uh, printing something on the bottle or on the label itself so I was actually going to give this a, a, a B plus but since it has no date it gets the B you know, I'm gonna give it the B which is which is the six it gets a six in, in the scale nothing bad very easy drinking a well-made beer don't understand why I didn't have a year on it and they can and they could do that so guys uh, up at Dominion Old Dominion need to get a dating machine guys. Y'all been in the beer business long enough. Y'all need a dating machine. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to harp a lot on that. Put a freaking date on the damn bottle. You got the AB backing in there. Tell them to buy you a damn dating machine guys. That's what you need. At least put the year on the damn label when it was put in the bottle so we'll know for our references you know, when it was put in the bottle. So that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Let's see what the other guys got to say about this. So we'll go over to Rate Beer first, 
And Rate Beer says 87 overall. I would kind of agree with that. Maybe even to an 89 if we had a date. And 68 in the style is what they're saying. So, not good numbers there. So, I don't understand why they're saying that it doesn't fit that style very well. I thought it fit the style very well. It's a well-made beer. It's 9%. I'm not getting any alcohol at all. So, it is a well-made beer. Let's go over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 86 in a very good range. So, I'm down with that. That's, uh, that's about where I have it. It's a very good beer. Just need to have a little more information like the freaking date. All right, guys, that's about all I'm going to say about this beer. It's decent. It's uh, definitely above average. Definitely worth trying. I wish they'd step up to the plate and put a date on the beer. That's all I'm going to say about this. And if you've had this one, give me some comments back on this one, whether you like it, didn't like it. Hit the like button, rate, comment, subscribe, and maybe we'll get lucky and get an A beer for too long. We'll take a walk into the kitchen tomorrow and see what's in the fridge. Hope you can join me then.